You have a great new collaboration with P.P. Arnold. How did that one come about? Uh, the exact mechanics, uh, I either can't remember or wasn't privy to. But we were, we were, we had already recorded that song for the record that we we were, well, that we were supposed to put out, but that will come later in the year. And uh, you know, somebody had the idea of of there was something about the song that uh, might suit a, a female perspective, right? Uh, you know, like the, it has a narrative, and, and I, I did the vocal. My vocal was okay, but the, the first so, somebody brought that idea idea up, and I thought, you know, that's not a bad idea, but it had to be the right person. You know, you could you could throw it to any number of young singers, you know. You know, even ones that people just there's a lot of good singers out there, even ones that people don't know of. Right. But that wouldn't really have been that wouldn't have that would have been beside the point. Um, it needed somebody with some character, um, and and somehow, somehow all of a sudden, P.P. Arnold wanted to do it. You know, my only regret is that because we did it when, when lockdown happened, we didn't quite, well, we, you know, we never got anywhere near to, to doing with it what we would have done had we all been in the studio together. Um, so I think we managed to pull, given that we all played in our own houses, and I think we managed to pull it together okay. Oh, it sounds fantastic, and it's going towards a, a great cause. Is it going to be on Half Drunk Under a Full Moon? Yeah, not that, not that version. We'll have the, you know, this is like a cover version of a song that nobody's heard before. Um, so our original version, which is quite different, uh, that will be on the record. And you did this new record with Tony Hoffer. Uh, yeah. Before I ask about that, it's still coming out in October? At, at the moment, yeah. Right, right. As far as anybody knows. Tony has done so many great records. Uh, I think his big break came from working with Beck when they were living in a house together. Was Beck the artist that really drew you towards wa wanting to work with Tony? No, I mean, the funny thing is that at the time, um, I mean, you know, you, you sign a record deal, uh, you might have heard of the odd producer, you know, you might have heard of people who, who win in 10 Grammys every year. Right. But, you know, I wasn't really up to speed on, on, on producers in general. So when his name came up, it meant nothing to me in the beginning. <laughs> then when I read um, his discography, it was the, the Beck stuff that jumped out to me because I was a huge Beck fan at the time. Still am, you know, you don't stop becoming one. Uh, that kind of, that, that was pretty much enough for me. Uh, fun, funnily enough though, the first time we spoke, we spoke by telephone one night. And, sure. uh, and we, you know, just to, just to see if, if it was a good fit. And, uh, you know, we fell out, um, which was completely my fault. And Tony's the kind of guy that you, I don't know what you would have to do to fall out with him, but I, I, I managed it on the first conversation. You know, I just said something flippantly that, and then the phone went very silent for a long time. So it's, you know, it, it started off weird, but over the years we've become really solid, good friends. And um, I have so much appreciation for what he does, I, I, the mind boggles at how he continually keeps producing great sounding records. And I've learned so much from him. And keeping things you know, present, I read that Views is gonna be sponsoring your tour. Is that a private thing or is that something you can talk about? Um, I, I, I'm sure I can talk about it. I mean, I'm not sure what I could, you know, you can, you can try. <laughs> well, it's the kind of thing that bands nowadays don't really have tour sponsors, but the Rolling Stones, I believe, were the first band to do that. I think Legs was who sponsored and all that. 
Was that yeah. something that you sought out or the brand went, we love you guys. We want to give you a good check and help promote the tour. You know, these th things are usually, there's so many connections in, in any industry. Mm -hmm. and I, I, so I don't think it was even as straightforward as them saying, hey, we want you guys, or us saying, hey, we want them. Uh, it was far more organic than that. It just it actually came up just through, by chance, through a particular friendship. And, uh, and I had absolutely no issue with it, you know. Um, touring is, is where a band like us really earns a living. Mm -hmm. uh, and somebody wanting to basically underwrite an entire tour, you know, you, you would have to be dumb, you know, uh, to, to, to say no to that. Um, right. Plus, you know, everybody in the band smokes, so... <laughs> and vapes at the same time. At the so, same time, that's talent. But clearly, we had, <laughs> clearly we had no issue with it. Right. Well, take these next few questions as massive compliments. Your songs are as catchy now as they ever were. And on that first album, my exposure to your band for the first time was Chelsea Dagger. I'm sure like everybody it was. And songs just don't get any catchier than that. Did you have any fear at the beginning? Like, oh my God, we set the bar way too high with this one? No, the, quite the opposite. Um, really? Because an audience is, re, you know, you've got the, the audience's reaction here and then the, the artist's reaction there. And they're not always the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, so no, it really, that, that didn't come into my thinking. As soon as one song is finished, you move on to the next song. As soon as one record's finished, you know, I'm almost disinterested in that record. You know, it's taken yeah. so much. It takes so much to, to, to make a record. But when you fin finally get to the day when you say, okay, I think this one's finished. We can stop now. Yeah. That's the moment you move on to something else. Um, so... No, I, it, th that, you know, that question comes up a lot, uh, uh, or, or, or a version of that question comes up a lot. Sure. You know, did, did, did you ever feel that, that, it, that it created pressure? Or The thing is, it really didn't. Um, and I guess, personally, I must be quite fortunate in that way. Mm -hmm. the, the idea of trying to beat... You know, like like it's a like it's a contest where you have to, you know. Yeah, so not a contest. Record, part. Yeah, yeah. This record was so you know so successful. You know, do you? But you want to beat it. I mean, that would be a a really sad way to live your life. It, it, it wouldn't. It really even the thought of that because I, I imagine there are some people that that do that. You know, like you have to you have to constantly uh, sell more each time and right time. that that must drive people insane you know yeah yeah it did to fleetwood mac and if it does to them then it applies to just about any artist there is but to me the funny thing about chelsea dagger is how many people ripped off that song like the the theme song to the tv show the league and wwe had a wrestler theme song that was a kind of a copycat of yeah. that kind of thing. Did you take all that as tribute, as an honor, or how do you think about that kind of thing? Well, no, the, my only thought about any of that is, you know, if they are, can, can, you know, can we get our lawyer to, to, to look into this? You know, that's, that's really all. And it's a funny thing because, you know, we're seeing it more and more now, right? Where where songwriters are being taken to court. Yeah. You know, and I find that whole thing just baffling. I, I, that could take us to a place where, I mean, pop music's been recycled since the fifties. It's been recycled, you know, and it's it's gone through thousands and thousands of recycling. Yeah. So. 
all of a sudden now people supposedly in charge are deciding that that can't happen and it, that just blo blows my mind because you know where are we going to get to you're going to get to the point where nobody can write anything <laughs> oh, there, are, there are only tw uh, I was going to say 12 notes there's actually only yes. 11, 11 notes because the twelve. And the twelfths are just the octave, so that stuff baffles me. Yet at the same time, if there's if there's money going, you know, if the if somebody does take one of your songs and you know really very obviously rips it off, yeah, then, then I'm willing to play that game and say, yeah, okay, if there is money there, then okay, well, I'll take it. But I would never go aggressively trying to... It would have to happen by chance. You're a man of taste all these years later. We, we can say that much. <laughs> and it, very, very few positive things have come out of this pandemic and people quarantined. But one of them was the recent reunion of the cast of The Goonies online. Was that something that you saw? No, I missed that. Um, I haven't seen the movie, though. Um, really? Yeah, I've, I've, I think I've seen enough chunks of it in the wrong order to make <laughs> the whole movie. But um, the whole Guinness thing was never my, it was Barry, our bass player. Uh -huh. He was the one who, who came up with that name and uh, it sounded good to me. So, but I never had to look into it any more than that. Wow, that's very interesting for me to hear on a few levels. Uh, one of them being that whatever you name your band, people are going to bring you memorabilia or references to that thing all the time. So I thought that your wall was just going to be nothing but gold records and Goonies memorabilia, but I am proven wrong on both ends. No, I'm, I gave my uh, records away. I, I, I couldn't get my head. It just seemed like... Uh... Oh, aggrandizing and to the to the highest degree to have these things, you know. Look what I did. So I, I gave them to people. My mum and dad have one. <laughs> okay, that's a good mantelpiece. <laughs> so but, you know, they're happy with it. So three quick questions, and then you are a free man. Even though I know you have your Reddit AMA in a couple hours and all that. I do, and I still haven't worked out how that whole thing works, but you know. It'll be interesting. You'll get the, the feel of it after two or three questions. You'll, you'll always be behind by three questions, but if you just say, I'm giving them 90 minutes, and you clock out at 90 minutes, there you go. <laughs> and how long are people doing it for? I think what happens is a couple of people are on time and getting their questions, and then other people say, oh, he's doing an AMA? I'll throw in a question. And it just kind of keeps going on, until you say, it's not going anymore. Okay, I'm thinking like an hour is... That, that seems fair to me. If you got an hour, they got an hour from you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the first thing is, uh, with all the quarantining, have there been any new TV or movie recommendations that you can pass along of things that have been great that you discovered? No, because the thing is, the way I live my life is really no different to, to the lockdown life. Like I spend 90% of my time in my house, in this room. Uh, this is where I write and, and, and play around with music. So really, my life hasn't, hasn't changed that. You know, I'm one of the fortunate ones who, it, there, there are so many, there's a lot of people I know that really, they're not having a good time with it. But right. uh, I'm, I'm in a, a nice place where, you know, this hasn't changed my life that much. So I really haven't watched. The only thing I've done in this, other than make music in this period, I read Woody Allen's autobiography, and I love Woody Allen, so you know, it, it, naturally I enjoyed that book. Cool. Second question. Other than the Fratellis, who is the best Scottish band of all time? You can say Teenage Fan Club if it's that hard. Yeah, no, De Deacon Blue. Deacon Blue, okay. Or, or, or the Proclaimers. The Proclaimers okay. are... are so damned original that 
there is nobody else doing what they do. So possibly them. Okay, I'm gonna do some more digging in their catalog. So in yeah. closing, any last words for the kids? Uh, my kids? <laughs> Uh, any kids that you think might be listening to this? Uh, you know, a lot of musicians call the audience the kids, so it's whoever you think. Well, you know, eat your vegetables. <laughs> go to bed at a reasonable hour. Sure. Um, and always make sure that you never quite do what you're supposed to do. You never quite obey the rules. Um, there's too many... Uh, the world needs more people who break rules. Right. Well, you've been very generous with your time here. So thank you so much. And really hope to see you live in New York when this all blows over. I, I'm, I can't wait. Cool. Thank you, man. Have a great rest of the day. Good luck with the AMA. Thank you. Goodbye.